and time again that black women's lives don't matter. Black girls that go missing and the ones that end up in the morgue with all their dog on, empty cavity. We need more than just WAP. We gotta have more some substance. If she wasn't up in that WAP, he would put her life in danger. The same way that we have to sit down and tell boys how to avoid being hurt by the police is the same way that we have to sit girls down. This is coercion, plain and simple. Hello Knockout, Tanya TKO here. And today we're going to be talking about a post that went viral that I've been trying to avoid doing because this post triggers me. And so I'm going to try my very best to get through this video because there are a lot of people who wanted to hear my take and my point of view on this video. Like I said, I've been trying to avoid doing this um, because it triggers me. Because as a person who likes to travel, as a person who's a black woman, and as a person who teaches self-love through relationships, this video really hit close to home for me. Because I remember in my 20s, I used to travel a lot. And some of the trips that I traveled on, there were men who would pay for me to go traveling with them. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the video. As you see from my face, I just, my rostro, as you see from my rostro, it's just, ah, we're going to be reading um, post by post of a man, a new money Negro, who left a young lady overseas, canceled her flight and left her there because she wouldn't up the WAP. Right. And we're going to dive into what that means in greater context. So hello, 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 everyone. We are live right now, but I'm doing this video just to get it done. And the only way that I could get this video done is by going live because I just I don't have it in me to sit down, record the video, edit it, put the, the, the words and then get it up. I just I don't have it in me. So bear with me as we go through this. For those of you who don't know me. I am Tanya TKO. I am a self-love specialist and what they call a relationship expert. But my emphasis is on self-loving through relationships. On this channel, we often use viral topics as teachable moments in our own lives for dating and relationships. I am a certified clinical hypnotherapist and I'm also a life coach. And I'm the author of the book of Affirmation Self Love, which is sold out worldwide. And we're working on getting more copies onto Amazon. But this book helps you rewrite your subconscious programming. It's a really popular book because it changes your life almost instantaneously from the from the first night that you start doing it, it starts shifting you into abundance, into greater manifestation, et cetera. And the sales of those books do go to help support this channel and me creating content. <sighs> okay, let's go forward. Let me read this for you. Let me read it. Bruh, you know this. Uh, should I read the curse words too? I I'll just, I'll abbreviate the curse words because. Bruh. You know, this B-I-T-C-H told me she wasn't feeling me after she had me bring her out here. And dude responds back, I told you about all this power tricking you doing. So what you gonna do? She thinks she's slick. She was talking all this freaky stuff before we got here. I'ma send her for a massage and then switch rooms and cancel her flights. Nigga, what? You play too much. And he got the laughing, crying emojis because this is so funny. And he's like, let the streets cover her tab. And he has up some image of Fetty Wap or whoever this person is, future. I, I don't know who it is. You tell me, you tell me. Then he goes on, the, the other guy's like, bruh, don't you got like seven days there? And he got the little Superman passed out on the ground. And he's like, that give her five days to figure out how she getting home. No hashtag, no more hot girl summer. And his pal is like, no, nigga, call me. This is so, so funny. Then he goes on and he's like, I dropped the story in a, F, in a Facebook group to see the responses. And he's like, oh, word. If anybody talking slick, ask them, will they be sending out donations? 
Otherwise, I suggest they shut the F up before I take their mama on a vacation next. Then he goes, I talked to her and explained that if she didn't want to give up the cheeks, why did she come? She says she is, quote unquote, grateful for this trip, but it doesn't entitle me to sex from her. And if that's an issue, she doesn't mind paying for her own room tonight, quote, unquote. And then he goes on, it's 570 a night. I know she ain't got it, <laughs> but I told her that would be best. Hope she got that extra times five plane money. B-I-T-C-H's love to play that independent flex till the check come with some face like, mm, like, ooh, I don't know what she gonna do. And homeboy says, well, keep me updated. I'm cracking the F up. He goes on. She headed to the front desk now. I'm calling the front desk to take her name off my room's account, then going to breakfast. She gave me my room key back trying to be sassy. She better hope they take black girl magic as payment or baby girl gonna be taking IG pics in the lobby all night. I'm eating, but I'm gonna go take a peek when I go to the bathroom. Declined, exclamation mark. And the dude is like, oh no, the other friend is, oh no, ha, 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 you gonna save her? And he's like, if I look like a power ranger, she look like she texting everyone she can for the funds. And he has up the, the, the skeleton dead emoji. I'm going to the bar and see if some white man's daughter need a black experience, right? Let's see. Then he ends it up with, she brought her ass over to the bar and told me, quote unquote, she apologizes for getting an attitude earlier and she understands my position. I told her, we talked about sex and sightseeing and I'm not here to force anything on her. I wish her the best, I wish her the best told and said for her catch the boat back to find a cheaper hotel. So they're on some sort of island, right? She looked all sad but not my problem anymore. I'll cancel the flight when I get upstairs. But as of now, she's blocked. That's a whole exchange. Listen, I don't want to go off. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm real saddened by this. I'm saddened by this. But you know what? I would say the biggest part, what do you think is the biggest part that makes me sad about this? I'm going to take a survey. What do you think? I want you all to answer. What do you think is the, the part that makes me the saddest about this? I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. So, uh -huh, and then someone is saying like clockwork, he's going to want our support once his white queen cries R-A-P-E. And KK is saying he's so disgusting. That's not the saddest part to me. Um, so Pisa Candy is saying, am I missing something? So pay trips equals automatic S-E-X. KK saying canceling her flight. Um, no, 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 no. The sad, someone's saying that she apologized. Someone else is saying the entitlement. No, mm -mm, mm -mm. that's not the saddest part to me. I'll tell you all. The saddest part to me, and I showed, I played this from my Facebook page, one of my Facebook pages. I have two. I have the Tanya TKO Show and Tanya TKO TV. And you saw some of the comments on the side. Don't go nowhere unless you got the money. Don't this, don't that. You go, well, she deserved it. She got what she deserved. Oh, she was trying to play games, trying to play old boy, right? Ooh, ooh. The saddest part to me is that once again, there is more and more evidence over and over, time and time and time again, that black women's lives don't matter. Time and time and time again, people keep coming forward because somebody posted this in, an, in a Facebook group that I was in. And I was like, tell him to find out where she is and what her cash app is. I said, tell her to contact me, right? I was like, tell her to contact me. And there were people in this Facebook group, women, black women who were coming forward don't help that B-I-T-C-H. She did this to herself. She deserved that. I said, listen, honey, this is a life or death situation. We already, damn it. We already know 
They taking black girls' livers out there. Go talk. Go talk to a mortician and the number of black girls that go missing and the ones that end up in the morgue with all their doggone organs missing, empty cavity ending up in the morgue. Listen, this is life or death. This ain't no joke. This ain't no game. But time and time and time again, we continue to make excuses for the bad behavior of black men. And I'm going to ask this at the very beginning of this video. I want you all to tell me, what do you think this girl looked like? Do you think she was dark skin, light skin, mixed? I Give me your answers below. Do you think she was dark skin, brown skin, caramel skin, mixed, light skin? Tell me. Tell me. Oh, look. Oh, yes, the answers are coming in. The answers are coming in. Oh, yes. There's a part of you that already knows. This is a brown skin to darker skin young woman because he doesn't value her. When I, before I did this video, I was talking to my sister about this, and my sister was like, yeah. My sister was the one who brought this to my attention because I didn't even think of this. But then I said, you know what? Yeah. And she says, if this girl were mixed, he would have been happy just to be in her presence. He'd have been dusting off the floor upon which she walk. Just happy to be in the same hotel room with her. You know the, you know the mixed type with the long, loose, curly hair? Oh, the long hair that's just flowing in the wind? Also, another thing that bothers me about this story, I, listen, I could do the survey. I could do the survey. If you think, if you think that he would have given a mixed chick the same, the same treatment as this girl left her in another country, and there's a lot of things that go along with that, leave her in another country, cancel her flight, and make it so that she doesn't have a way to get back home from another country, right? If you think he would have treated a mixed chick the same way, you know the type you see on the Instagram with the light skin and the little flowing hair, blowing in the wind with the cafe all lot skin. You know, the type of lip gloss, popping, young skin and everything. You know, with the little booty tooted. You know what we're talking about. Do you think he would have treated her the same way as a, as a brown skin to darker skin girl? If you think he would have put up the number one. If you know for a damn fact he wouldn't put up the number two. And there's a few different reasons for that too. And father figure in the home is going to be one of them. We're going to get to it because I took notes. I took notes. Another thing that bothered me about this is that you can tell that this young lady is young. You can tell she's young and you can tell she doesn't have the funds. And it's like time and time and time, a goddamn again, I have people coming out to me, oh, you know, find your man when you're young. You may get your hair in my you young, you're 23, you better hit the wall at 23, you better get them when you're 22, college, you better be looking for your man, right? Part of the reason, part of the reason that, part of the reason that men are able to have this money is because they have more time in life to be able to gather their coins. When you're young, you don't have the money. Women exchange their youth for time in school, time in the workforce. Given enough time, we all make the money that we need to make. God darn it. Women exchange their youth for time in the workforce to be able to make their money, to be able to stack their coins, to be able to stack their chips so that they can be able to have the money to, to do what it is that they need to do and, and, and create their own type of flex. But that wasn't the type of young woman that he took out on the trip. He didn't take a young woman out on the trip who had her own resources. Let me ask you all another question. Do you think that she was the, the stripper type, right? Do you think she was the, the stripper type who was taken out on this trip, who had the ability to be able to call up another man, have somebody who got the money wire it to her? No, 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 no. Instead, he took some young, naive girl out on this trip who doesn't have her own funds, who isn't able to, 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 to do her own flex, and he knew it. You read, the, go back and read the thing. He said, I know she doesn't have the funds. Because if she was some real, if she was some true hot girl stripper type, if she was the Cardi B type when Cardi B was at her heydays swinging around on the pole, splitting it down to the ground, 
there would have been another man who would have taken care of that before before he even had the, the the audacity to put her through the torturousness inside of this hotel. Another man would have swooped in and said, baby, I got you. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Right. And we're going to talk about WAP. Because over and over and over and over and over again, there are so many men who are like, oh, you're going to lead with WAP. We need more than just WAP. We need this. We need that. You better have more some substance, right? But that man didn't care about what a good person she was, what a nice person she was, how, how pretty she may have been, her essence as a human being. None of that. None of that. If she wasn't up in that WAP, she gonna, he would put her life in danger. The saddest part to me, the saddest part to me, was that there were so many black women co-signing that this is what she deserved, she deserved. And we don't take the time to hold men to account. I'm telling you, the saddest part to me is that in my soul, in my spirit, in my heart, in my being, I am becoming sick. Listen, hear me, hear me, I am becoming sick. Listen, listen, I'm becoming sick. I'm becoming sick and tired of women who exclusively date black men, black American men. I'm becoming sick of them because your standards are so low and you create this vortex in which black American men can run rampant, run roughshod over you and other people. I'm becoming sick of black women who exclusively date black men. And then the white chicks who descend upon my page who love them some black khaki. I'm so sick. I'm so sick because you all have become accustomed to low ass standards too. You know, there's so many people who are criticizing Ice Cube for going to the White House to go meet with this by Jasso, right? But I heard Ice Cube on the on the Chris Cuomo show talking about, listen, this is the man who's in power. He said that he wanted to meet with us. We are we we went, we're going to speak to and see whoever has the ability to give us what it is that we need. And I said, you effing right. You effing right. Because if there is one group of people who takes you for granted, listen, the last thing that you do is you continue to leave yourself there, optionless, waiting for them to come and, and treat you as they wish. Optionless. There at that for them to pick and choose from the best of the bunch. For them to come and decide when they're gonna come and 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 have access to you, however they choose to give you access. If there's a group that is not treating you as you deserve to be treated, go listen, go elsewhere. Go where you are celebrated, not just tolerated. I don't give a good goddamn. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. I don't give a good goddamn. Go hedge your bets. Go put your eggs in different baskets. Because what ends up happening is you all with this whole, a good black man is like a damn Loch Ness monster that you only see him walking through the woods and he's so escapable. You know that he's out there somewhere, but you keep tolerating effery. You keep tolerating the foolishness in the interim and you keep making excuses for these people bad behavior. Let me ask you all some mother effing questions that you should be answering for me right now. One, why did he go on a trip with a woman that he has not already had sex with? Listen to what it is that we saw in the post. His friend talked about him power tricking. And that he and he says that this is like a thing that he does often. So this new money negro and his power tricking. This is his MO. It's like, what's the matter with you, son? What's wrong with you, son? What's, what's the deal? That you can't go on a vacation with someone that you have already had intercourse with. That you have to take young, naive girls out of, out of their city, out of their state, out of their country. Listen, we've already talked about this time and time again. Men have a tendency to like women who are, I'm getting too excited, knocking things over who are on average seven years younger than them, many of them preferring women who are 10 years younger. But the average is seven, but there's more and less in between. 
And we're going to do a live show with a man who wrote in for Ask Tanya, who claims that there was a 20 year age difference between him and this girl who was doing him dirty. But let's go forward. Let's go forward. Right. So he goes and he plucks some young girl out of her area, some young naive girl who doesn't have her own money, doesn't have her own resources, and most likely doesn't have a father at home because God damn it, I tell you, I've been on many a trip in my 20s and I wish a motherfucker would. I wish a motherfucker would. Papa knockout, you think he's gonna go for some man leaving his daughter in another country. And you know what? And this is what the thing is, these predators, they prey on the weak and they pray. Listen, many men just don't have respect for women the way that they have respect for men. And when they know that there's no Papa Bear around, they feel that they could treat you however it is that they want to, or with, there's no Papa Bear with some power. Because if this girl had a white father who was a lawyer somewhere, this bitch ass nigga would have never done no shit like that. Goddamn, listen, holla if you hear me. I want you to speak to me in the comments. Talk to me. So they like girls on average seven years younger. And then they, he takes this girl out of her country, brings her into another country, right? Claims that they talked about sex or the cheeks, as he puts it, up in the cheeks, opening the cheeks or whatever, before they got there. What's wrong with son? He said she had him take her out there. No, this is your power tricking MO. These are questions that we can ask one. What's wrong with son that there is no woman of which he has already had intercourse with that he can go on a vacation with? Why is he trying to trick and entrap young girls, young women into going overseas with him, hoping to have intercourse with them for the first time? And if the question number two that we can ask, if they had had intercourse before, if they had, what is it that changed between when they used to have, when they had intercourse on the States and when they got over there? Was it his musty mayonnaise smelling plaque filled teeth and gums? Was it the funky odor from his breath? The, the, the toe jam and funkified feet with the atrocious odor just clamoring around inside the room suffocating her? Was it the skid marks in his damn underwear? Was it the cheese up in between his penis that hasn't really been cleaned? What is it about him that once she got over there, that she was so turned off that she was like, you know what? I can't. I can't. Mm -mm. No, thank you. Listen, let me tell you something about consent. It can be taken away at any time. This is why when these low standard ass women come forward talking about she was playing these games, she deserved that, right? This is what makes me feel so tired. So tired. Let's go, let's go on to what, what else is on my list. Let's go on to what is else is on my list. All right. All right. This young lady obviously is naive and she trusted him, right? It's obvious that her people, that there's no man around who had met him. And some of these men make it so that they make sure that the men in your life don't meet them. And she was too young to know that these are things that you must have in place. She was too young to know that if a person is going to get you a plane ticket, that you make sure that, that they give you the money and you buy the plane ticket so that the confirmation and all of that comes in your name and your email and you have control over that. She was too young. But you know what ends up happening, right? And I was going to save this to the end of the video, but we might as well talk about this now. We might as well talk about this now, right? Oh, Lord. You see, oh, I have so many men that come out. Oh, Tanya, who hurt you? Who hurt you? Oh, who hurt you? Right. What do you think is going to happen to this young lady after this trip? Because like I said, she's too young to know, but she will know and she will understand. This is why I said, listen, listen, I don't care what transpired. This is life or death right now. This is a young lady stranded in another country. My, my goal, my objective, my concern is getting her home safely because it's obvious that he didn't give a good goddamn about her. It's obvious that there are many people who didn't care about her. But I know what it's like to travel overseas and I know what it's like to trust and depend on people. I know what that's like. I don't know what it's like to be left overseas, but I know how it can be scary. You all see me, I backpack. I take my backpack, I go and I make a way, right? But I know that, 
you know what, let's, let's, let's scrap that train of thought and just say what it is that I wanted to say. What do you think is going to happen to this young lady after this experience? She's going to be hurt. She's going to know better. I mean, she's going to learn along the way. She's going to know better next time. But there's going to be a little part of her on the inside that doesn't trust. There's going to be a little part of her on the inside which is damaged, right? And it's like, then men come out, oh, who hurt you? Who hurt you? Right? Who hurt you? In my particular case, because I'm a life coach, I hear so many of these stories behind the scenes. And these things enrage me, right? When you hear women talking about, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. Where do you think it comes from? Listen, black American men teach you that they aren't fucking needed. They teach you goddamn sooner or later, soon enough. They teach you. They teach you how to raise children without them. They teach you how to pay bills without them. They teach you to fucking fight for your goddamn self out there without them. They teach you to, to how to how to fend off police without them. They teach you how to go on vacation and make it your black ass self back home without them. They teach you, goddammit, it, that they are replaceable. They teach you that every and anything that you need to do, you can do without them. They teach you by default. They teach you and they show you. So much so, so much so that, they, let me ask you all a question. We're going to do the numbers three and four. If your mothers or fathers or someone in your life, home, school, or in a position of authority over you had to sit you down, this is for women. If they had to sit you down and have the talk, the same type of talk that we have to sit down and have with our black boys, when they start growing, you realize, oh, they're coming upon a certain age. You have to sit girls down and have the talk with them about these messed up ass niggas out here that you can't fucking depend on. If your parents had to sit you down or some authority figure had to sit you down and teach you how to navigate in this world, navigate among the low vibration and predatory nature of men, navigate through, through the, through the haphazardness and the, 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 the damn hairy cariness of men, put up the number three. The same way that we have to sit down and tell boys how to avoid being hurt by the police is the same way that we have to sit girls down and teach them how to avoid being hurt, how to avoid being raped, how to avoid being left on a date. There were many women who came out talking about vex money. There's also F you money. It's like we have to sit down and we have to constantly have these conversations with our girls. And then people come around and then they say to you, when you're old and bitter and battered, who hurt you, bitch? People just like you hurt me. I've been taught over and over and over again the lessons that I don't need you. And even if I did, I have to learn how to live without you. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. We are taught that we, we are taught how to be able. You, you think, you think really, you think really that there is any woman out there, that there's any woman out there who would prefer who will prefer to raise a, a man's child in the spitting likeness and image of him without him, that she would rather sit through her pregnancy growing bigger and bloated with a human being pressing down on her liver and intestines, punching up towards her lungs and heart, that she would rather sit there and do it alone so that when that water breaks from between her legs and the panic of new life getting ready to come through her body and the reality of the task that she is about to undergo. And she knows that she has to get to the hospital. What woman out there would rather do that alone? Listen to what it is that I'm saying, but time and time again, you are taught after you go do something like that, after you go to the hospital and you sit up there alone with the doctors coming in asking who's here with you and you're pregnant with a man's child and he's not there. What woman, come on, after you go through something like that, after you explain to the child that they're, where their father is or is not, whatever story it is that you have to come up with, when you have to learn how to do something like that on your own, you are taught that you don't need them, goddamn. You are taught that you don't need them. 
Listen to what it is that I'm saying. They teach you. So now this young lady is out on this vacation where this man has decided just out of spite sick to leave her stranded in another country. And I wonder how many of the people in her own life would sit up there and be like, well, that's good for your bitch ass. You shouldn't have gone out there being so fast going over there. This is what, what just serves you right. This is why I'm saying, listen, time for lesson is later. Let's get this young lady home safe now. She'll learn her lessons, but let's make sure that she's safe. Because what he did, you know, women are getting trafficked each and every day. Black girls go missing every day. There's a friend of mine who posts on Facebook the number of black girls who go missing each and every day just from New York alone. Now, all over the country. And far too many of these girls are trafficked by black men. What does that do to a young lady? Let me go down the rest of my notes. Hmm. Situations like this arise from a lack of fathers on both sides. Because I know that this man didn't have a good, worth a damn father in his life to teach him how to roll and navigate out there so that he think that, that this, is, this is a good tactic, just out of spite's sake. Like, okay, if you wanted her to go to another hotel or whatever, you took her out the country, right? You're responsible for her well-being. And it's like, I'm so, I'm just so sick and tired of us. I'm so, I want to hear your comments below. This vexed me to no end. There was a young lady. I'll show it to you. There was a young lady who came out and she said that she know what to do. She said she would have fixed his ass right up and had him trapped in that country for six months. Let me show you all. Okay, here we go. Do you see it down there? CL Boutique and Fashion and Culture says, I wish I knew her. I would tell her exactly what to do. He would be stuck there for six months looking for an attorney while she gets free room and board and a free flight home. The game has levels. So then I asked her, I said, well, I'm like, well, do tell. Tell us what she would need to do, right? There are 220 people responded to this one comment alone, right? So listen, she gives the whole deal and I want you all to hear it in her words. And I want her to get props for her idea because this is real out here. Trafficking is real. I heard a story of a young lady who ran away from home when she was, I believe, 12 or 16 years old, one of those. And some black man took her across state lines, had her up in a hotel and was receiving money from people assaulting her. And when she tried to get help from the police, she was arrested. And it was like, it was like, it was a vicious cycle. And she was beat. She said that she was beat and stuff happened to her that she would not wish on anyone. Right. Okay. So here, here are the comments, right? She says, a cons she said, it's simple. A concerned relative would contact the local federal authorities there and in the United States, not local police, and report that a relative recently flown there is in danger of being sex trafficked or possibly worse. Her return flight was canceled, provide screenshots and receipts, and her room was changed, provide front desk number, and the man, provide the man's picture who she was with is no longer answering his phone. While this is going on, she needs to sit her ass in the lobby and cry hysterically about all the dumb decisions she has made in her life and never say a word to anyone and let the cards fall where they may. That's her advice. That's her advice right there. And personally, I do not, I, I, I do not feel any level of sympathy for this man who took this young woman out of the country, who didn't have the resources and he knew she didn't have the resources. So this is some new money ass Negro who had a few little thousand dollars to try to take a girl on a trip for some power tricking. And there was no woman that he's already had intercourse with who was willing to go on vacation with him. And these are problems in and of themselves. I wanna hear your thoughts below. What are your thoughts about this whole situation? I mean, we've already seen what people's comments were on my page. So I know that this is split on both sides and this is just indicative time and time again. And I understand why people say divest, really. This is just, it's ridiculous. It's too much. 
It's all fine and dandy when they're accepting your marching, when they're accepting your, your help and your, your body's on the front line. There's somebody else who say that these men, they love sex, but they don't like women. They tell you, oh, it's not all about the WAP, but when the WAP is off the table, then there's nothing else that they really care about. They don't care about your safety. They don't care about your life. They don't care about nothing. They'll leave you in a foreign country and allow you to be trafficked by whomever. Organs taken, sent home in a body bag with cavity empty. They don't care about you. If you're not giving up the WAP, and it's like, he. this is coercion, plain and simple. You will put her in a dangerous situation if she does not agree to have intercourse with you on your time schedule, how you decide when and how and why and where and, and like what that she should have intercourse. So I want to see your I want to see your your comments below. Oh, has something like this ever happened to you? What would you do if you were put in a situation like this? And what happens when enough of these situations happen to a person, to a young woman? And then people come out and they blame you, talking about who hurt you. They blame you for the actions of other people because under no circumstances is a black girl ever able to learn, to make mistakes, to not know. You're supposed to come out of the womb already knowing everything, able to combat the minds of grown men, even at the age of 12, how people will talk about you were just some fast ass little girl out there being assaulted by grown men. On that note, I want to see your comments below. Tanya TKO and I'm out. Go out there and love one another, but most importantly, love yourself. And part of loving yourself is let's, let's talk about Let's talk about things that this young lady could have done. When you love and care for yourself, you make sure that people know who you're going to be with. You make sure that people have seen their face, that people have met them. If you're going to travel outside of the country with somebody, you make sure that your people see and know this person by face, that they know how to reach this person, that they have this person's phone number. Because it's like, okay, he could block your number, but he can't block your mama number, your aunt number, your uncle's number, all of these people in your life, even if your father is not there. So part of loving yourself is taking care of yourself, yes taking care of yourself and learning from the mistakes that other people have made so that you don't put yourself in a dangerous situation. But like we said, the prefrontal cortex is not even fully developed until a person is 25 years old or around the age of 25. So it's like, please, I, I beg you, young ladies, you are up against, you are up against a group of people who you have been taught to see as some knight in shining armor, hoping for the day that someone can come and save you. And they're taught on how to prey upon you. You're looking to be saved and they're looking for a quick release and to throw you away. So listen, part of loving yourself is taking care of yourself first and foremost, doing what it is that you need to do to stay safe. Listen, on a, and on that note, I will see you all in the next video. Tanya TKO and I am out. Leave your comments below. If there's something that I forgot to say or didn't say, I would love your comments below. I will come back through since this video is live and I will check the live comments and I'll respond back to you. But just leave your comments below the video because once the live video is over, then the area to comment is on the main video, all right? And make sure you join my mailing list to know when this amazing, beautiful book is going to be off of back order when the publisher has new copies. So make sure that you go to tanyatko.com forward slash subscribe. You can also support my channel. The links on how to support are below. You can go to tanyatko.com and click on support. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you thumbs up the video, make sure that you subscribe, and hit the bell notifications to be notified of new videos. Leave a comment below, share the video, and come over to tanyatko.com to subscribe to my personal mailing list and drop me a message of a viral story that you'd like for me to cover. See you on the other side. Peace.